Taurus friends and welcome to your horoscope for November of 2020. We're Taurus this month. I'm sorry there's no wheel to show you but I'm going to make sure you have the dates um, on the side here but the wheel will be back next month so zero worries okay. But Taurus this month I am so pumped because I feel like we get a deep breath this month. We've got Mercury coming out of retrograde, Mars coming out of retrograde, Jupiter Pluto conjunction, Neptune's coming out of retrograde so it's this kind of breeze and oh an eclipse. Yes it's this breeze though of forward motion that I don't think we've really had available at our fingertips for several months so this month is where I think we kick off getting back to picking up a little forward motion and speed and feeling like we're making some progress. So I think I'm really pumped about this month for all of us. My goodness. Now the eat and greets will continue to go on this month and I'm getting them ready into 2021. I'm so excited about that. Remember that if you want to watch the um, eat and greet videos ad free, you can come and join me over on Patreon and you can find the link to join me on Patreon in the description box down below. This month we've got some really beautiful people coming. Simon Vorster will be here who is a fellow YouTuber as well. We'll have Judith Hill talking about medical um, astrology coming. Sonal will be here talking about Vedic astrology. It is a loaded month. Matthew We Met will be here from the Till line. So if you've enjoyed Kathy Rose and Basil Farrington, you will love um, meeting and greeting with uh, Matthew We Met as well. So it's just a beautiful month. Check out everybody who's coming and I look forward to bringing them to you, okay? All right, Taurus, let's get in here and talk about what's going on in November. Now, right away as we're coming into the month, we've got Mercury coming direct on the 3rd, of course, Election Day here in the United States. But outside of the United States, everybody's getting some Mercury direct in Libra energy. And for you, Taurus, this is going to light up that sixth house space. Now, we've already seen this energy, Mercury being our energy that's of the mind, decision making, thinking, making plans, how we communicate. Now, Mercury's been retrograde since October, and we've already seen Mercury come through Libra. So this was just a quick reevaluation for you as to what's going on in your sixth house, your health, your well-being your daily routine. You know, Taurus, did you need to make some decisions and correct, course correct this daily routine? Did something get a little off track with your health and your wellness? Did you drop that fitness plan and now it's time to get back on it? Whatever it is in the way that you're showing up in service to yourself, others, and your daily routine, this Mercury Direct now, you've made some new decisions about how or what's going to be a part of your daily routine in life so that you feel in balance. Balance, Libra energy. So I look forward to seeing what that is and what changes you've made. Now on the 10th of November, we're going to see Mercury moving out of that retrograde energy. So see, you've just got like seven days to relook at that health section. And then we're going to see Mercury move forward into Scorpio, into your seventh house. Now Mercury has already been here as well. Been here and retrograded and is back. So as Mercury is back in your seventh house of relationships, I'm going to ask you, what are your desires in your relationships? What's the communication been looking like in your relationships? You know, what have you observed about yourself? What have you observed that's actually going to make it so that you make better decisions or different decisions in your relationships? Where has Mercury taught you in your relationships? You need to communicate with a little bit more force. You need to communicate deeper, maybe in a way that speaks more healing into your relationships so that they can transform. Scorpio, that think about that in your conscious chosen one-on-one -on -one relationships, whether they be romantic, business, personal, with your children, with yourself, with your, this, whatever you call God, whatever that is, what's the conversation that you've observed and how is your mind working over there towards transformation? Now on the 12th of November, we have got this Jupiter Pluto conjunction. We have had three of them. This is number three. We saw it in April when they were both direct. We saw it in June when they were both retrograde. And now we're seeing them again, both direct. Now, Jupiter and Pluto coming together. First of all, it lights up your ninth house space. So this is like a whoo to your expansion, ninth house, publishing, marketing, broadcasting, um, education, training, languages, international and legal, business affairs, any of these things that expand you out from where you are at. We see Jupiter and Pluto, they've been working together at this pushed level of success. It's like you've got this inner resource to handle challenges and to step out there successfully. And these two have been working 
for your greatest good and giving you the opportunity to step into your power. I love it. It lets you shine and it lets you see how to get things done and that you can. Now you started something in the beginning of the year. What did you start when they were directed? It was like sonic speed, drive, determination. Then you had to review it in June, like, hold on. Whoa, what do I do with this thing? And now that we're here, it's like it comes back to flourishing and you're ready to go. You're ready to take that expansion on the road into 2021. So let me know in the comment section for you down below what it is. You know on this side what it looks like. I am all over the internet right now. And I had to relook at that in June because it was too big. So what is it for you, Taurus, okay? On November 14th, we see Mars come direct. Mars come direct right? And it, this is going to be happening in Aries in your 12th house. So Mars in Aries in the 12th house, even though it's in this watery house, he's direct the energy, the strategy, the things you've been working on behind the scenes, the projects, the research, the creativity, the genuine just taking care of Taurus time without feeling guilty, without any of that kind of stuff. This energy is like Taurus, even in your quietest place, even in your spiritual place, in the place of maybe taking care of things with you that are challenges, behavior patterns, beliefs that we can't see, but they are manifesting in your life. Who do you want to be? Who are you prepared to show up as? What are your desires in this area, right? Even in your spiritual life as this spiritual version of yourself, who do you want to be? Are you willing to do some self-sacrifice to show up as that person, right? What are your desires that have been hidden here in this 12th house? What do you want to create? Because it's not always bad, right? Has there been some BS in your 12th house and you don't want to be that person anymore? Whatever it is, Mars Direct is now ready to take the show on the road. He's coming out of retrograde. Let him have his cosmic coffee stretch and get his life together. But Mars is going to be ready to move here just shortly. And then as we get into January, Mars actually actually moves into Taurus. So then we can really see you going. But this is a nice slow, I'm telling you, Taurus, with this Mars direct here in this 12th house, if you need to take a break and take care of yourself, please do so, especially in regards to your health, okay? November 15th, we've got a new moon happening in Scorpio. So again, over here in the seventh house, plant your seeds of intention. What would you like to begin here? This is a passionate desire field filled moon. It is one of depth. It is one of transformation. It is one of connection. So in your relationships, what's the depth that you want here? What's the passion that you want to have and show up in your relationships with? Pa plant your seeds of intention there. This is definitely a moon that over the next four weeks could welcome in new relationships to your life for sure or a change so significant in your connection to your relationships that they seem you. I love that for you. Now on the 21st, we've got a busy day. First, we've got Venus entering into the energy of Scorpio where we've just had a moon several days ago. So lighting up the seventh house. Yes, it's passionate and all that good stuff. But Venus in Scorpio wants balance here as well. She wants deep balance. What you need to be mindful of here is that this is your ruling planet in your opposite planet. Don't get obsessive. And if you do get obsessive about something, try not to run to the um, lower evolution of Taurus where it gets really deep and possessive and jealous. Instead, in this particular area, allow Venus to do what she does. Harmonize this area of relationships for you at a level of depth. Open yourself up, Taurus. You're an earth sign. When you open up, there are gems in your depth. And sometimes there's gems you didn't know were hidden down there. So open up in these relationships, Taurus, okay? We also have the sun entering into the energy of Sagittarius, bringing light, heat, life, and vitality, a ready of optimism to play to your eighth house. So see this opening in the relationships, then a willingness to optimistically expand yourself and travel down that road, Sagittarius, in this eighth house place is phenomenal for you. Now, I also think that the sun here brings, um, it's like this sense of beyond your horizons, right? Something greater that you want to travel you want to venture to and this could be a collaboration this could just as easily be that that inheritance money that tax money is coming in or your attention you're motivated to it I wouldn't even be surprised if there are a fair amount of collaborations or good things happening to a partner that you've been connected with or a resource that you've been connected with and now it starts to come in and benefit your world. So I love that for you as well. On the 29th, we've got Neptune coming direct in the energy of Pisces. Yes. Now this is a subtle energy, but when Pisces, when Neptune is 
um, in retrograde. The world is very concrete. It's like, imagine and dream your future. Well, I can't. It's like a solid wall. I need, I need Neptune to be direct so that I have access to really getting in between those worlds in a way that's not so solid and concrete so that I can vision, I can create in that fantasy place. And this is all happening in your 11th house space. So truly, I would imagine that since June, from June until November, in your friendship, in how you want to be seen in the world, where you want your recognition and kudos, in your alignments with organizations, your long-range plans and goals, even in your technology, what things was it like, boom, this is serious, I can't daydream this anymore, I've got to handle this in reality, what changes need to be made here, where do I need to spiritualize, where do I need to set a new ideal that is very realistic, there's nothing fantasy about it, in this area of my life, what have you seen that's like, you know, because with Neptune direct, we sometimes can't distinguish the real between the, the fake or the imaginary versus the material world. So with Neptune retrograde, we were able to see that. So in this 11th house area for you, what did you re-see? What did you reset? What ideals did you reset or realign with in this area of your life? Because as Neptune comes out of retrograde here this day, we go back to being able to pull and to imagine. And we have to be able to pull and to imagine and to create. It's literally the thing that takes the soul forward. We hear, we, we, we hear that whisper of the soul here. And we create our next reality in between the worlds and also ask for guidance here. I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. And I will always remind you that before a chair was a chair, it was just an imagination, right? So we need Neptune to be out of retrograde to create some things and to create a vision for us. So anyways, I could stay there all day. I'm obviously very pumped about that. Now, as we close out this month, we're going to close with a fourth lunar eclipse. This is going to happen on the 30th in the energy of Gemini. Now, this is your second house space. A lunar eclipse says something needs to end, be acknowledged, or it creates an adjustment in, in this area of your life over the next six months. Now, what I will tell you is that something in the energy of Gemini, especially in the second house, it's like you make money with words. What you're saying, what you're putting out there, what you're communicating, what you're thinking has an impact on your finances. You know, I would really tell you because Gemini is so into the details, use this lunar eclipse. We're heading forward what do your finances look like what does your budget look like what does your passive income look like what do you value how are you valuing yourself out there are you speaking your truth and even if that means that that truth is very uncomfortable right maybe even you're uncomfortable with it or it's something you've never said before it's been a big year Taurus right at this lunar eclipse the value of your words the value of how you're valuing yourself and the value of the details you're putting into this value section of your house are huge. Now I will tell you, I think that there are some projects or there are some things that absolutely fall out for you, Taurus. It's like, no, nah, that doesn't belong or it doesn't belong because I don't have the details of it. So maybe you need to gather, adjust, and acknowledge that you don't fully have the details of how to make that work. Now I do think coming into the Aquarian energy as well as we're getting closer to it, you know, new revenue streams, new value streams, become available for you and they're very much so going to be along the lines of what we're going to experience in 2021 the energy of air so even your thoughts your thoughts have genuine value for you okay all right Taurus man I think that it's going to be a great month and I'm not going to lie like in the United States we've got Thanksgiving going <laughs> and I'm just so pumped to eat like I just love it so I feel like it's going to be a very good month <laughs> I hope wherever you're at, even if you don't have Thanksgiving, you're eating delicious things this month and just know that I love and support you. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I'll see you on Patreon. I'll see you in the Eat and Greets and I'll see you every place that I can see you. Okay, Taurus? Bye, my loves.